Welcome back to another episode of the D-League today, episode 15. Last week, Bilal and I, we talked about real-time strategy games. So today we will keep talking about the same genre, but turn-based strategy this time. And um, the difference to real-time strategy is, well, as the name implies, uh, players take turns playing the game. So you can come compare it to chess, uh, both just that in chess, both players play the same faction, so they have the same units. And uh, in chess, the white player starts and then the black player uh, has his turn after the white player does, uh, does his move. So uh, in chess, chess is pretty much a turn-based tra- strategy game where both players take turns moving one unit at a time and um in in turn-based strategy video games of course it, it would be boring if uh, both uh, or all players are forced to play the same faction with the same units so um or just have uh units pl- pre-placed on the map like in chess i mean you cannot build units you can uh, switch your queen uh, you can uh, switch uh, a pawn to um to to a different uh unit kind of when you reach the end of the field of the of the enemy but else you cannot get any further units so in video games you can have base building or not depending on the game and um, also a main difference is that you can uh, move all your units in most games in in your turn Mm -hmm. so for example if you have 20 tanks uh, on the map then you can move all 20 tanks in your turn and uh, afterwards the uh, the other player can move his units and react um so uh, that's that's a main difference of compared to chess and uh, like the complexity of the games and um uh, in in most games you have um differences between the factions so maybe they have special units that only this faction can build or where like the commander has different attributes so you might have the same units but uh, they play differently or don't have different uh, uh, st- uh, strengths and weaknesses mm-hmm. uh, so it, it gives a bit more deepness and um, well compared to real time strategy games turn based strategy games uh most of the time take a long time to finish uh so mm-hmm. um several hours <laughs> yeah. um so that's kind of uh, a disadvantage compared to real time strategy that uh i mean if you compare it to chess then um you, like one game can take i think 2 hours 3 hours depending on how much uh time players are given to think about their turns Mm -hmm. so yeah just imagine you have a game where you have like three hours to think like if chess takes three hours to finish one match then just imagine you being able to move 20 units in one turn instead of one unit so yeah Mm -hmm. tempest strategy games take a very long time to finish at least that's my <laughs> that's my impression. Um, so uh, that's also one reason why uh, TBS games are more niche for competitive gaming, but they are pretty popular for single player games. I think, yeah, um, because um, they don't stress you out too much. You can play it at your own pace. Um, it's not like you are like the, the the computers throwing units at you and you need to react quickly. 
if if computer units are moving, then you can just check out where are they and uh, where you should move your units. So that's uh, like Tempest strategy games are can can be very relaxed. I think in single player. Um, what's your what's your impression on that, Bilal? Um, yeah, I I, th I think the same way they. And when you're playing alone, like obviously you're, nobody's waiting on you, so there's uh, literally zero pressure, unless you're applying the pressure to yourself, um, like trying to get better or anything. But um, but the the turn-based strategy games that are single player are kind of like they kind you kind of feel like you're immersed in like working with like your units or characters to like battle the guy so like you put thought into it but it's kind of a more relaxed thought rather than like mm. yeah fighting fighting somebody else where you're like you know i actually have to beat this guy <laughs> but uh unless unless the the single player game is like super difficult or something but i've never played any turn base that had like hard ai so uh yeah, yeah. me I, I to be honest i'm not a big fan of turn based uh, strategy games well mm -hmm. it depends on which games you are talking about uh i i guess when you say tbs then most people will probably think about uh sid meyer's civilization series mm -hmm. and uh well those games can be very long yeah. uh at least uh from what i heard it's yeah like actually most... maybe six hours or something uh-huh yeah, uh, most Civ Five games I just don't finish. I haven't played the game in a while, but when I was playing it a lot, I would play with like a group of friends, and we'd all join the same match, and uh, we'd be playing it for like four hours, and then we'd be like, "All right, this is too much," and we just save the game and never really end up coming back to that save file. So, so that was one like disadvantage of of like playing them was just you, we wouldn't finish them. Like, I hmm. there there was another game. Um, that's that's similar. That's en called Endless Space, where the matches they're like not as long. So I usually ended up finishing those, but I would usually play. But usually the ones that I finished were AI games because like we, you can tell pretty fast like if you're gonna lose or if you're gonna win, um, based on what what you're going for. Like if you're going for science and you have like a military guy around you who's just has so much presence, um, then you just know you're screwed and you can just surrender. So, um, so yeah, I think it depends on what kind of turn-based it is for how long it is. Cause mm. I personally don't like the ones that are way too long. Cause they just I just get bored and <laughs> I stop playing. But like I think the ones that are like smaller scale turn-based strategy, um, I enjoy those a lot more. Um, <laughs> but probably any turn-based fans would probably disagree. Like they probably because I think turn-based fans are really looking for like the actual strategy part of it based on like looking at stats and all that kind of stuff because i mean if you if you were to look at like turn-based strategy versus rts i mean the fundamental difference is that um people have more time to think about what to do next so mm. so that like let's lets the game have more complexity um like and more strategy in it rather than worrying about any mechanics at all um well yeah. except for yeah i mean like how many how many units um a character can move or etc stuff like that would be the mechanics but mm. but not like you know fast well, action skills well that would be more gameplay mechanics right not yeah like not mechanical skill. mechanics <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah yeah exactly what what you're saying is like last week we talked about uh strategy and reading and mechanical skills mm -hmm. and uh in this case for tbs like mechanical skill is uh, completely Out removed yeah because uh well uh, now that i think about it for example in in uh something like worms mm -hmm. yeah, like actually. the worms series uh aiming and like calculating uh the the wind mm. is also very important so i guess if you have a game like civilization then mechanical skill is removed yeah but if there is something like uh, where you actually need to 
you need to aim or you have some complex movements. Uh, I mean, in, in the Worm series, it's um, it's turn-based because you move your Worm and attack and then the other player has his or her turn. Um, mm -hmm. But it's kind of like a turn-based strategy action game, right? Because uh, you need to aim, you need to know how much power you need to put into your shot so you hit your bazooka shot and uh, then you need to calculate yeah do, uh, is the wind like blowing to the left and uh, or blowing to the right and i want to hit the worm on the left so yeah mm -hmm. uh, if i want to hit with the bazooka shot i need to actually shoot right yeah to the right side and let the wind carry it to the left because <laughs> otherwise it will fly over the worm and and stuff like that so uh in in case of worms if if you have a game that has similar gameplay then i guess you could say mechanical skill is still very important because no matter how good your uh strategy might be uh if you don't hit um if you don't do damage then uh yeah the, you won't win yeah i think um in terms of turn based it can be a pretty diverse like i think actually like when you when you say rts game most people expect something even more like defined than a turn-based strategy because because the turn-based strategy can technically even be something like worms that we were describing and it's just like there's so many different games in it like i mean there's xcom there's civ 5 endless space like fire emblem so i mean and worms and, and like worms actually has mechanical skill xcom has like vision and placement of characters with no like colony management or anything. Uh, I mean, Civ has all the construction and building units uh, and managing your your cities, as well mm. as like military and multiple different victories. Um, and Endless Space is similar to that, but like on a smaller scale. So I mean, and, and Fire Emblem is also like a more character based one, like XCOM. So I mean, they kind of have like <laughs> a diverse. Uh, like kind of play style between them so i think i think it's like important to recognize those but just like know the the fundamental is that like somebody does something and then waits for the other guy to do something <laughs> so yeah yeah so uh now that we talked a bit about the the genre uh last time we talked about the like the player experience and well we already talked about we now talked about how um like tbs games can um well or what's important for the player to be good at a tbs game uh like strategy and reading uh and maybe mechanical in, in case of worms yeah so uh i think um as as a player like tbs as a genre um is is for players that really like thinking about long-term strategy and ways to win mm -hmm. and how to exploit weaknesses of the other player. Uh, so um, that because that's kind of in case of um, like civilization, let's say that's the only way to difference yourself from the other player because. Uh, most most units are still shared, right? I only played the older Civ games, where pretty much every country had only a few specific special units that they could build. Uh, yeah, that a... only that country could build. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, because then you kind of have like the the same starting point, just maybe some different uh, strengths and weaknesses depending yep. on the the country or the leader you choose and um but if if you if you pick that country or that that leader then you you already made up a strategy in your mind where you say yeah I, uh by turn 50 i want to win through uh world wonders or uh i want to have tanks so i can stomp the other guy or uh whatever i mean that in that case even before the game begins uh 
I guess you have you have a more of a long term strategy in mind than RTS where maybe the other guy is rushing and then you have to throw out your strategy where you maybe fast tech because if you do that you you just die and uh, in TBS of course like like in chess like in chess if you if you see the the other players moving that piece then you think okay what what would be the ideal move to do now and for TBS, uh, you also have the time to think about it. Just that um, you might know, yeah, there's a forest there and I can move my units there so the opponent can't see it. And then I may maybe just uh, capture the HQ or something like that so you can play sneaky. Uh, something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, and you... you because you don't have to grind mechanics, um, that's also pretty much the only thing to do as a as a player. If you if you start playing TBS, just not thinking about anything. Just imagine a player uh, playing Civilization, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna build uh, some unit, but without <laughs> purpose." Or he he or she just moves them randomly over the map, then like without strategy, then uh, I I doubt that guy will be much of a problem to defeat if you have a clear strategy um, in yeah. mind. You need to you need to have a plan like just like in RTS where you you think you like this is the ideal of what I want to do, and you need to be ready for. Like, you know, something to happen that, that would change what you're going to do next, like, depending on what country spawn, like, which countries the other people are playing, um, mm. and their positioning and stuff, like, like, if a military faction spawns right next to you, there's probably something different that you want to do than just tech up science, for example, if you're, like, playing mm. Civ, um, yeah. so, stuff like that, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Go on, sorry. Oh, I was just saying, um, with something like Civ, I mean, I was never really great at it, So, but I would always, like, think about, um, I guess, like, a, a strategy of what to do. Like, if I mean, if you're picking a country, then you typically want to do something that, um, that'll, like, align with your country's bonuses, because other mm. people are obviously going to also exploit their bonuses. So, so if you, so yeah, I mean, if you pick a country bonus, then, and then like, and which is like a science bonus, like if you pick Babylon and then you start building only military, then that's just stupid. So, so, um, so those are also like something really important is like, they, it's, it's mm. all about like the stats and numbers, I think for the most part in turn-based strategy and then making a plan and changing it when something happens. So, yeah. And, uh, last time we also talked about how, an RTS can become boring or like mm -hmm. can be a boring uh, playing experience. And uh, for me, I took some notes um, as a as a player, how it might be uh, boring to play. And for me, it's pretty much uh, the same as RTS. So uh, like if the if the design is bland, like everything like uh, you don't have much unit selection um, or every faction has the same units kind of mm -hmm. without much difference between the, the, the characters uh, or if the game is too slow so for example I guess something like Civilization might not be a game for me except if you say okay um if you have something like blitz rules in chess where every player has one minute to finish his or her turn mm -hmm. that would speed up the game and uh, give it more speed and m both players would probably make more uh, more mistakes so it's kind of more tense as well uh -huh. and um, yeah like if, if also if everything feels kind of the same so for Imagine somebody plays uh, Germany and 
like I play Germany and you play the US, mm -hmm. but like all I get, like I get one attack bonus and you get one defense bonus. So in the end, it's zero and we don't have special units. And so, so it's kind of like playing the same rates or the same faction. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for <laughs> everything kind of, or that, that, that would be very boring. Or maybe if you have a tank, let's say light, medium and heavy tank. And uh, like the light tank is exactly one third as strong as the heavy tank, and the medium tank would be two thirds, so that you can just say, okay, if one heavy tank is three light tanks, and uh, why should I build the heavy tank? <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, I guess that 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 would be also very boring. Luckily, uh, so far I have not had a game um where that was the case i think we're just like number matching yeah well like where, where you would say okay uh i have infantry and infantry all like all units are good against something specific uh, -huh. uh but but they're all the same kind of like uh, imagine you build in one infantry and two infantries uh, and it goes up to 10 uh, as a squad or something but it never changes like it's just uh 10 times as strong as one infantry something like that uh so if you have units like separate units but they feel the same like they have the same purpose or maybe the same design uh then that's also boring because then you you might uh, reduce the game to just spamming two or three units uh, because everything is kind of the same and you just pick the be best unit that's uh, uh, the best um, bang for the buck kind of uh -huh. where you uh, where you get the most power for the lowest investment kind of. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, and, I think... Um, yeah, sorry. I was, yeah, I'm trying to think about which ones I actually enjoy the most because I liked, uh, I, I played one of the Fire Emblem games. I can't even remember what the name was. It was for like the Nintendo DS. Like I played it a long time ago, and mm. I think I, I enjoyed that a lot. But actually, actually, I think it's really interesting how the characters can just die. It's like in XCOM, and then you just like you'll play the next levels at like a disadvantage or something. Um, I wonder how, although I've always been curious of like how that, uh, mechanic affects players who are like very bad at the game because like maybe they'll, they'll get, they'll kill to kill off too many guys to where they get stuck and now they can't, uh, go back and they'd have to like restart, um, mm. like all the way back just to play the game and there's a possibility of that happening again. So I mean, mm. probably by then they would just quit. So I mean, <laughs> I've been interested in like how turn-based strategy, like story games, work with that. Um, and I guess they just game over. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they do. Like, lose. Yeah, you will just lose. So I mean, I know that Homeworld, uh, which is an RTS, would let you like just play a mission from before. So I, I mean, that's a good solution, I think. But still, that mission, if you messed up that one and you couldn't. Like, if you didn't have enough units in that one to play the next one, <laughs> then, you know, you'd have to keep going back, back, and back, so. Um, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's just something I just, that I thought about, yeah. From what well, the series I enjoyed the most as a TBS was probably the, the Advance Wars series on Game Boy Advance mm -hmm. and... Uh, Game, like uh, Nintendo DS, yeah. Because even though everyone had the same units, the commanders were so different. Like they had um, passive bonuses mm -hmm. for different unit types, or like for all units, maybe you have a commander that gives one more, uh, one square extra movement, or. Uh, mm -hmm. I mostly played the commander that gave 
um, infantry power bonus. I think it was in the, in the first game. I, I think it was fifty percent, but then later on it was like thirty, thirty um, percent. And in advance was um, the more damage you do, um, you you kind of, you fill up a commander power uh, bar. Uh, which you can activate to um, increase attack bonuses further, or uh, in that case, if you like, you had a commander power, and then if the bar was completely full, then you had the like a super commander power. Uh, and uh, for my favorite commander, it was no matter how much HP um, your unit, your infantry has. Um, it captures buildings in one turn. So you could be losing, but if you had a, a transporter unit mm -hmm. with an infantry unit loaded in, if you could sneak it to the HQ of the enemy, uh, you could just win the game because you win when you capture the HQ. Mm -hmm. So because uh, you... You, you just activate the super commander power and then if there is no unit nearby or blocking the HQ then yeah you just win uh -huh. <laughs> yeah so yeah that's that, that's a really interesting uh, like um, turn on having the same units for everyone but because there are there's such a big selection of commanders and they are mostly very different. Um, of course, you have stronger and weaker commanders, but um, because that one gets a buff for infantry, you will probably be uh, building more infantry compared to the commander that gets a bonus on tanks. Mm -hmm. So, like, everything is shit, but his uh, tanks are stronger, so he's gonna spam tanks. And uh, so, so just by picking a different commander like in civilization you switch the game style like your play style mm -hmm. yeah i see that also also the the, the design was because it's a japanese game it, it has a like an a manga anime style so like a, a japanese design mm -hmm. and um yeah it's like even some some commanders are very Japanese designed, and I just I I just like the comp like this this whole uh, more cartoonish look. So it's not like a World War Two anime uh, uh, simulation with yeah. uh, <laughs> dirty tanks and stuff. So it's more <laughs> like um, a TBS with a it, it's about war, but it's more a Happy go lucky war simulation kind of. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a very weird it's weird that we have games like that, but it's really I don't know why it's interesting. Like Team like Team Fortress 2 is like a cartoon, but it's fucking guys being blown up into pieces anyway. Yeah, something like that, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, um actually. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think actually, I think the T turn base that I enjoyed most was probably Endless Space because it was like Civ, but but like I said, it had um, it was a bit more like it had as a crazy complex like science tree, um, mm. but it's um like you can actually finish matches, which is what I liked about it. Um, yeah, and uh, the other two reasons are um, like it's simple enough to understand, and I enjoyed the. I actually enjoyed the passive bonuses for like call uh the factions and you could even create your own like set of like your own faction which is basically just a set of different uh passives um so you would have like a number of points and you have to choose um this many positive passives and you could add negative passives to get more points and then you could use the points to add more positive passives um mm. so like you could for example you could give yourself you could lose uh, dust, which is the currency. Like you could make it so you don't gain any dust at the beginning of the game, um, or you start with none. 
and that would give you like one negative point so you could do it towards something like maybe you get uh, more food from arid planets or something like that um, and, and yeah obviously food would be used for growth of a uh, population and population leads to industry and so on um, so I like that one a lot uh, and also I like space games a lot so so <laughs> that helps yeah, the, the the good thing about the Advance Wars series is also that the games don't take ages. Mm. Um, like, you can only build units from factories and you need to capture them because they are pre-placed as uh, neutral buildings. And so you kind of fight for uh, factories and cities that give money per turn. And um, so like you are forced to, into action and uh, also this the maps are not that huge it's because it's a game designed for mobile devices um, who has time to play for six hours while sitting in the train right yeah so um, so like when you play versus I think a game finishes in like maybe an hour an hour and a half uh if the other guy just doesn't surrender at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so it's also a more quick, like a game that finishes more quickly. Sadly, the online mode was only implemented in the, in the last entries. And yeah, because the DS uh, online kind of sucked, <laughs> you needed to uh, use WEP uh on your uh, as a um, like the the security level like mm -hmm. the um encoding yeah um it was like wep is ages old it was really old that when the games were released so uh yeah it was like do i want to risk my internet connection <laughs> just for playing the game online so you know the the answer was no <laughs> at least for me so i only got to play like a few matches offline uh via i think it was even infrared you um, know the wireless like nearby yeah, yeah, yeah right? like wireless yeah, yeah. Still, still and i think the game also didn't have a save feature so yeah i the like you you talked about civilization having a safe feature mm -hmm. and uh i guess let's let's move to the developer part uh slow, like uh, let's let's switch slowly and uh i think for tbs that's very important actually to have a a safe feature like you didn't return to your safe states but if you have a friend and you you play and the game already lasted three hours and you are very sure that you won't finish in the next 10 minutes uh then maybe at some point you want to save yeah uh and uh and resume like the next day or on the weekend uh something like that and uh especially if the game um takes a long time to finish then I think it's really necessary to give players the option to save and continue um, because else, yeah, like, like it was for you, if, if, there, if there was no, not even a safe feature, you would have probably not even completed one match yeah. because who has time to play a match for 10 hours uh, or let's say six to 10 hours? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, when I get home from from work, I got five that, uh, five hours to do everything from cooking to preparing, like maybe clothes for the next day, cleaning up stuff, and uh, well, you could do that while the other guy is taking his turn. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly. uh, yeah, but then uh, yeah, it's, I I guess that's not very fun, right? Yeah, I think actually all the games like all the new modern ones are have a save feature like 
endless space, endless space to civilization five through whatever, like beyond Earth six and all that. Um, war, Total War, Warhammer, like all the Total War games probably have it. Like all the new ones. I don't know about the old ones. Mm. So, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> the batches are just so long. It's like uh, actually in in Warhammer, there's just so many stats that. The matches are crazy. There's so much to think about, and wow, that game. <laughs> I can't. I can't get into that game because of how complex it is. But um, but yeah, it has it has a save feature because of that. So, sorry. I'm guessing. I mean, like, yeah. I would if I if I played with friends. Fundamentally, obviously, I would want to like save and then come back to it, which is why that's like really important to do. Um, and I don't think it's that. It's not that. Uh, like horrible to implement in the first place. So I mean, all your, it's just serialization of like unit data. So um, yeah, yeah. I guess it's really easy, right? Because units are not like moving. Like you, you didn't give an attack command that you need to save where the attack command was issued. Like for RTS, if you continue, then let, just imagine all your workers stop gathering resources because you resumed the game from a safe state exactly that's ridiculous right yeah so uh with rts for i was gonna say with rts yeah you need to like save um you need to know (laughs) you need to take into account everything's position and everything's current state as well as like velocity and acceleration and everything so so like you need a really good system for that but with like turn-based um Ultimately, you just need a good system that, like, like every thing that can move or like everything that can do stuff, um, like has some sort of save state. So, like, let's say like every unit that can move like inherits from like this actor class, um, mm. and then the act L actors will like they'll listen to some event, right? So so once you press the save button, every actor is going to be like, oh, um, time to give my position to the save system, and the save system will just work automatically. So like that way, you just like if you if you have a system in play like from the beginning, you just make sure that you can save a unit's position by like listening to some save button. Um, yeah. Then there's really no like big difficulty with uh, saving that. You would just need to take into account like. As, as complex, like the more complex your game gets, the more stuff you need to save. So like you probably mm. wouldn't have the same um, saving button, I guess, for um, like if for your research tree as you would for units. Um, but like maybe they have the same, <laughs> this is like really technical, but maybe they have the same interface um, where they both can do the same thing. So they can both listen to a save event or something like that. Could you just do it like in chess where you just record every move of course that's very simple so if you say okay player player a spawns at position 20 20 to 10 like on on the board and then yeah you just record okay he builds unit a and moves unit a uh to that point and and so on like like in chess you can just say okay this uh, this uh, figure moves to F2. And so you can just look at the letters and you can say, okay, you, you can kind of reconstruct everything just from what, from reading the letters yeah. uh, and moves. So what well, yeah, do, ultimately, do you think? Ultimately, you're kind of, I mean, you're kind of doing that, but without, like, recording, without, like, storing everything. I mean, if you wanted to okay. do a, if you wanted to do a replay, um, then, like, yeah, you'd want to record everything. Um, hmm. But, like, if you were just doing a save, then, then like, yeah, how it would work was just, uh, hmm. God, lost my train of thought. Uh, I was just saying... If you wanted to like just save player data, like every every unit, for example, like let's say if you were using Unity, um, every unit would know where its transforms position is. So like every unit knows where it is. Um, but when you hit save, you would just want to put that into a file, basically. Hmm. Uh, so you just record everything like 
when when you need it actually because it's kind of the same thing as storing everything uh except you're not like calling a serialization like every time somebody moves okay but in that case if you resume from a safe state and you only record the current state then you wouldn't be able to do like save a complete replay of, of yeah. the game right yeah so if you were doing a replay system mm. then you'd probably work it otherwise so hmm okay is there is it, it do you think there's anything else that like a developer needs to pay attention when creating a turn-based strategy game i mean we talked about uh, the time it takes to finish we talked about a safe feature because of that because tbs uh, can take so long um do you think there's like anything else that is mm, something noteworthy to talk about yeah so there's a problem in multiplayer with determinism um which means like you want to make sure every client is doing the same thing um so if you're if you're like making a multiplayer like turn-based strategy for example um typically i would not even include physics at all unless unless it's something like worms actually yeah I, I'm, I'm working on a turn-based uh strategy with physics so so basically like if you're using physics then you want to make sure that they're deterministic which means either they only compute on one computer and then the rest of them uh follow along to that like they just change it to they change its position based on some other physics that was calculated just once or you want to make sure that your system when it calculates like a trajectory it does at the same time every time um so that like on each client um it'll do the same thing basically uh hmm. and like some solutions to that are like fixed point uh math or you know other other ways i won't go too like far into detail but basically you want to you want to make sure that uh you have deterministic gameplay so like everything is happening the same way on each client and there's no like discrepancy like like for example if your turn-based strategy had like uh if you could hit units with projectiles and the projectiles could miss um then on some clients like the projectiles could miss if it wasn't a deterministic system so like stuff like that is something to take into account um, okay so desyncs kind of yeah that, that's basically a desync fundamentally okay it adds uh i guess there, 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 there's just balance yeah or it, like make... the, those are the big technical ones like yeah. like saving determinism multiplayer um you know stuff like that uh you just want to make sure that all of your math is right and everything like that i mean mm. and the, the rest of it is like you said like design and like making yeah. sure your user doesn't have an annoying time playing and then making sure the game itself is fundamentally fun stuff like that so hmm. i guess in in case of tbs you don't have to pay much attention to lag I mean, you yeah. can have like one second of lag when playing online, but yeah, if nothing moves, then yeah, it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? Because you yeah. just need to receive the command, and if it's one second late, then it doesn't matter as long as it's correct. Yeah, I remember I did. I did actually play Civ once with like a thousand ping. I don't actually remember why. And... <laughs> And you could not really press any buttons, so like that was very annoying. It does have to be, but yeah, I mean, the net code wouldn't have to be as optimized as like a first person shooter or an RTS. Hmm. So, what was the like the, the, the problem you had because of the high ping? Um, it was like like pressing n turn with because because how the game works, right? When you're in multiplayer, is you press end turn and then you wait for a callback to like register the ending of the turn with the server so so that the other guy will play his turn send data to the server and then send it to you and that's all a bunch of callbacks right which means that you wait for the server to respond after you do something mm. um 
And <laughs> and if that's taking 10 seconds, then like say you're smashing this end turn button and you're just like getting irritated and you're like, why is nothing happening? So so like you, you basically you're just waiting very long for something to happen and it's so it can be unclear uh, if it's lagging. So so technically so like something that's really important is you want to make sure that it's clear when you're waiting for a callback. Actually, now that I think about it. Um, so so if you press enter and it should say like something like waiting and I think I think it does actually say waiting but I remember uh, I just remember like <laughs> it was very hard to do anything um, so yeah don't play with a thousand ping <laughs> okay <laughs> hmm. but yeah I think that that's everything I can think of for uh, worrying about as a developer I mean there's always more but those are the big ones I think that I would say yeah, me for for me as well. I guess everything else is gameplay. Yeah. Uh, if units are balanced or like, uh, if you have like one tank that can win you a game, that's boring. So like, you mm -hmm. need to have a balance between the units. Cause where's the strategy if one unit dis destroys everything else mm -hmm. then yeah the the point is just either spamming that unit or getting to that unit as fast as possible yeah uh yeah that's not very strategy like so i guess everything like it's the same as for rts it's about uh varying gameplay between factions or commanders or whatever you you're using in the game and uh, maybe having some slight visual differences, uh, even if it's the same unit, um, mm -hmm. yeah, stuff like that. So, uh, like that, not everything feels the same. Like uh, you pick a different commander, but <laughs> everything looks and feels the same. That's <laughs> uh, yeah, not not very fun. So I guess it's, uh, I mean. Because it's about strategy, you need to think about weaknesses of units and strengths and how far they can move in one turn and uh, yeah, th things things like that. And so the interaction must be interesting. For example, if you have an artillery unit uh, that has high range, then it should probably be slow and maybe cannot attack right next to itself so in that case to uh, keep people from attacking the artillery unit directly um, you would place a tank or maybe infantry in front so uh, they can't force their way through as fast uh, as it would be possible without it like they might take two or three extra turns and by then the artillery might have destroyed the tank uh so yeah you, it that 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 way you can raise the the value of that one unit for example um mm -hmm. and i think stuff like that like in the tbs game you also need to have like combos that are strong where you say okay uh artillery unit and cheap throwaway units are great together because you ha just have a meat shield and by the time um, the other player reaches the artillery unit or would reach it yeah, everything is gone stuff like that yeah just yeah, so. it's annoying uh, annoying mechanics and, and boring stuff uh, get rid of it <laughs> yeah so, so <laughs> as we talked about pretty much everything we we could think about of tbs because well tbs is if you compare it to chess chess is complex and deep but the basic gameplay is pretty simple mm -hmm. i think in tbs games uh there is also a wide range of like deepness of the game mm -hmm. you can make it kind of as shallow as chess where everything is pre-placed and both players have the same units and the same rules and there's nothing different and uh, you only have uh, 
what is it? You have pawns and king, queen. Yeah. So do you have like seven or eight different units and uh or you could say you have 80 different units and 10 different factories and stuff like that uh, that makes the game much more complex right so uh mm -hmm. but that's up to the dev how much time you got and how complex you want it to be uh maybe if it's a smartphone game then yeah you don't want to make the game too complex mm. uh because uh, you need to be able to play it on a small mobile phone screen um yeah, but that's pretty much it so uh, let's let's talk about a few examples again where uh, well we talked about um civilization most of the time because it's probably the most iconic game mm -hmm. and uh, like you said you can research stuff uh, you have different countries, different factions. Um, so, uh, I talked about Advance Wars, um, which is more like an arcade game, I guess, you could say. Um, and then, yeah, Worms. I think, like, Worms changed so much from uh every entry in the series um that like the current worms games are completely different to the classic worm worms games even from from the gameplay like the physics um like the old games were also more arcade games kind of um hmm. not that complex uh i mean they had the the wind physics and uh yeah like different landscapes but um yeah everything always worked kind of the same and uh, in the most recent games you have stuff like water cannons water guns that push worms around so you can use water to flood enemy worms down the hill into into uh, water that kills the worms or off the edge of the of the uh, map or stuff like that uh, so they added new stuff in or like uh, grenades bound don't bounce that much they more roll uh, in the more recent entries so uh for for me, I'm still a fan of the old games because I like the arcade style of of the games more. Um, but I can uh, I can um, how how should I say I can respect why uh, Team uh, Seventeen um, changed mm -hmm. stuff around because you cannot release the same game five five times in a row yeah um kind of you need to make some changes and some people won't like it uh some people will like it uh maybe even changing the worms from 2d drawings to 3d models and so on um so even the visuals changed a lot um but yeah else you wouldn't get new customers i think mm -hmm. yeah Pretty much everything has to keep changing, or they kind of just do nothing. I mean, if if a game is being played a lot, then that's uh, then the game is like <laughs> how it's supposed to be. I mean, I, I guess it's kind of like situational, like not to go too far into like different genres, but like if you look at Brood War versus like League League of Legends changes like every like couple of weeks, and and that's like really exciting, but then it's also like brood war doesn't change at all and you know korean pros are constantly still playing that so i mean like mm. it's kind of a case by case basis like do you make i mean like with brood war obviously they just, blizzard can just make new games and it doesn't matter and they can leave brood war how it is um with league they're just changing the same game a lot so yeah yeah well well the difference is is in in the um financial model right i mean for, with root war you buy the game and mm. then you got it yeah, yeah 
and with League of Legends, they uh, you you play it for free. Yeah. And uh, there are new champions coming out that you might need to buy, or you have cosmetics, so like different skins, for example, different helmets or maybe different armor, uh, stuff like that. And that's how um, Riot Games makes money off League of Legends. While in in Brood War, oh, that game is so old. Um, <laughs> they give that, it away for free. Yeah, br- yeah, they do. Um, but like people that that play the game love it so much. If you change anything, they will hate you for changing it. Yeah, and uh, it's but with losing <laughs> with the leak, it's that winning. people it's expect change. If if some if some champion is broken like if you release a new champion and it's completely broken like uh there's no reason not to pick that champion yeah and you don't patch it then people will like players will quit left and right because the game is so stale it's just picking that champion and then that team wins kind yeah of. with league that that's why they have like the five band system the constant patches and like uh and there's always like more than just one guy who's broken like there's one that's like oftentimes perma band because of how absolutely broken they are but like um but yeah i mean there are other ones that are very good as well so uh so yeah i mean it keeps it Sign of semi like interesting and not like too annoying, although it is annoying when there's a very broken champion in the game. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of, so how did how did we get to that topic by the way? Uh, just, we were we, just because we were talking about TBS, right? Yeah, we were just saying, uh, <laughs> like releasing new worms games and they were different, and then we were saying, oh, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. By the way, since, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, since we're on the topic of like esports, I was watching. I was watching uh, Worlds, and uh, <laughs> TSM got knocked out, which was uh, pretty sad. Anyway, Worlds was it was kind of uh, it was like what the hell is going on? People people just got crushed in uh, this week of Worlds. Anyway, okay, so uh, another great example of TBS that I that I really enjoyed was. Uh, Shadow Run returns. It's not multiplayer. Mm-hmm. It's strictly single player. It's an uh I guess you it it's an RPG game, but when you enter battles it's TBS. And so like I really enjoyed the whole design and the music uh also fit all the scenarios really well and um, you could build your own main character so which characteristics the the, the uh, character has maybe it's an elf or an orc and uh, depending on the race you could um, max out different uh, stats kind of or abilities mm-hmm. and um, so if you th- then you had like um ability points you could uh spend so you could build a melee fighter or a long range sniper or um somebody that uses robots like small vehicles uh to attack or a healer or a shaman that s- summons uh spirits and uh that way, even though you play the same story, uh, it's it's just fun to play to build a new character, and I really enjoyed that. And I think I finished the game like five or six times, because uh, you just you you kind of skip the story or you make different choices, and um, in that case, you get other responses of course but in the end uh the ending is pretty much the same uh but like the you you just or for me i uh, really enjoyed playing the same battles but with different um in a different setting like using 
uh, a different character or a different strategy than playing it the last time. That was really, really great, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I've never tried it. Uh, yeah, you, if you like uh, strategy game, like TPS and uh, RPGs, then I guess uh, Shadowrun Returns is a good game to recommend because mm -hmm. it's it's not too long and the story, like the 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 whole the whole game is very well made. I think um, like the story is not not too boring, not too predictable um and uh yeah it, it's it's just fun trying different stuff and after finishing the game once the next time you you uh create a new character you will finish more quickly of course because mm -hmm. you just skip more of the story uh elements and you know what to do and so on yeah mm. else uh I guess you you played Fire Emblem a bit, but oh, I I often read that Final Fantasy Tactics is supposed to be a really good game, but I have no clue. <laughs> Never tried it. Yeah. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I think <laughs> maybe that's something to look into. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think like the ones I enjoyed, I enjoyed Fire Emblem. I enjoyed Worms. Pretty much all the Worms games are fun. Um. What else? Like Civilization, like we said, XCOM was fun. Um, I mean, Endless Space. I didn't like Warhammer that much, but that's because I'm a. I don't play much TBS. It's like if if somebody's an a an a avid uh, turn based fan, then they would definitely like uh, Total War. Pretty much all the Total War games. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean that's all the ones I can even think of right now. I don't know what other ones I've even played. Um, yeah, I don't remember anything else really. Hmm. Yeah, I think that that should be it. But yeah. we are also one hour into the podcast, so I guess that it's a good time to to finish for today. Yeah. Uh, I guess if if our listeners have any good uh, recommendations, where they like, where where you think you need to play that game, because that is what TBS is all about, or where's, where a game is really special, then, uh, yeah, just let us know, and uh, I guess we'll give it a try. Yeah. Um, as long as we have time, because TBS take so long to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess... Mm, any, any final comments for this week? Uh, no, that's it. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, me neither. Uh, I guess, in general, TBS is a game that, like a genre that you either like or you just don't like at all. Um, but, yeah. So that's it for our term-based strategy podcast this week. And uh, shall we do first person shooters next week? Mm, I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay, then we can. will keep yeah, our we'll listeners confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Then uh, thank you for listening again this week. And uh, I hope you will listen. And you will join us uh, next week again. 